As CentOS returned to the wild, we turn our sights to new horizons, new software, and the promise that lies in a new beginning. If you look at the official website of the CentOS project, you'll notice that there are two versions of the CentOS distributions, Linux and the stream. In this video, we're mainly concerned about saying goodbye to the Linux version of it, with the end of life being June 30th, 2024, just in over a month from now. We will briefly touch on the reasons of ending the support for the CentOS, as well as the possible migration options and how to choose the appropriate one. If we take a look at the Red Hat website, we can immediately see that Red Hat Enterprise Linux is normally subscription-based, and there are quite a few versions of this. When I looked at the website, I found quite a few options. They are available for the 60-day trial, and after that, it's subscription fee-based. Due to the discontinuation of the CentOS, uh, the high-performance computing cluster that I'm using for my computations at the university is also forced to migrate to another Linux distribution. And they sent an email around about the new Linux distro they will be using, and I was just curious why they chose the particular one. I did some research, and I believe I found the reason why they chose the distribution that they chose. So, back to CentOS. It became widely popular, especially in the enterprise environment, for a few reasons. One, it was free. Second, its binary compatibility with the Red Hat Enterprise Linux is great. So all that means is that any software that's designed and tested on the Red Hat Enterprise Linux will run seamlessly on the CentOS. But along with this comes the great stability and reliability that Red Hat is known for. And this was very important for someone wishing to have that, but for free. Also, each CentOS release was maintained for up to 10 years, which provided for great long-term support, along with this active community of people and organizations using it. Now, also being based on the Red Hat Enterprise Linux, it has also very nice security features that attracted many organizations as well. CentOS is also versatile enough to be used in the home servers, as well as the large enterprise data centers, including web and database servers, and even desktops. I was wondering what were the reasons for discontinuing the support for the CentOS Linux since it was so great. And I believe the two main reasons for that decision was that Red Hat was primarily trying to focus all its attention on the stream version. And two main reasons for this were first is the more efficient resource allocation because supporting both traditional CentOS Linux as well as the stream version required significantly more uh, development and testing, which also leads to more cost. And the second reason, I think, is being able to provide a better custom support for people or organizations who use the Enterprise Edition that is subscription-based. So now, what are the alternatives for folks migrating from CentOS to something else? Looks like there's only three possible options. So the first one is to move to the stream version of this, but it does not necessarily mean it should it can work for everyone. It very much depends on the application. Uh, second option is obviously migrating to the official Red Hat Enterprise Linux, which might cost you money. And the third one is migrating to some other Linux distribution. And this one is primarily what we will be talking about in the next couple of minutes. So after a quick research online, I found a really great table from the Microsoft Azure Learning page. I'll leave the link in the description so you can check it out. Here it is. It provides a, a good comparison of the different distributions available that have the seamless or the, the most easiest transition from the CentOS to another Linux distro. It has the Red Hat Enterprise Linux as an option, Alma Linux, Oracle, or Rocky Linux. And you can see where each one shines. Ultimately, people in charge of the HPC cluster I'm using chose to go with the Alma Linux. And that's not surprising because this version has the Alma Linux HPC community image. And it seems to be really working uh, well for things like NVIDIA applications and parallel computations and things like that. So all that you would expect from the high performance computing cluster. So there we go. Alma Linux HPC is one of the possibilities, but there are a few others. It depends very much on what your primary use for the operating system is. 
and where it runs. Now, if I were to answer the question, is CentOS dead? Yes, it is. It has reached its end of life and won't be supported any longer. However, the CentOS stream looks like still will be supported and folks using the version 8 are just advised to move to the version 9. And in my understanding, the stream version is mainly a bridge between the Red Hat Fedora, which is sponsored by Red Hat and the Red Hat Enterprise Linux. If you found my five cents about CentOS useful, don't forget to hit the like button and consider subscribing. I do post occasional videos on the high performance computing and I plan to do more of them in the future where I submit GPU and CPU jobs to the cluster and use Slurm workload manager to submit jobs. See you later.